welcome back to my channel welcome back if you are new my name's Hetty and I make videos every single Sunday all along the topics of eating disorders disordered eating uh, health and fitness as well as travel and lifestyle so you would have seen what I had for breakfast this morning which was toast white toast with butter peanut butter honey and banana that's literally one of my favorite combos ever so i kind of wanted to just talk about fear foods and what sort of my fear foods have been and how i've incorporated them into my day-to-day -day life always licking me and it's so annoying fear foods in recovery and some bits of my advice well my experience rather um and i will just make a disclaimer as well that i'm not a registered dietitian or nutritionist or eating disorder specialist um i'm simply just sharing my own insight and my own experience with this so fear foods which i'm sure if you are watching this you'll probably know what a fear food is but generally a fear food is something a, a term that is used quite a lot in the eating disorder community or disordered eating community of certain foods that can give an individual feelings of anxiety, uh, fear, thoughts, um, fear of weight gain, fear of overeating, fear that that food is is really really toxic or really bad um, and that some crazy thing is going to happen if, if you eat that. So people can have a lot of fear foods and for all different types of reasons even in other eating disorders such as binge eating disorder, bulimia and things like that. I personally um, struggled with numerous eating disorders, um, one in particular was bulimia, I struggled with bulimia for a long long time and I had the belief that if I had these certain foods either in the house or if I allowed myself to have these certain foods I would just binge on them like crazy. So my mind would tell me you know you can't be trusted you have to restrict them you can't go anywhere near them basically you're broken because you're you can't eat those foods um and some of my common fear foods um i mean it, it did change quite a lot but the common ones were definitely peanut butter huge huge fear food for me i literally had so much anxiety if i even saw you know a jar in somebody else's house i just notice it straight away it was like a big like that feeling granola was also another one and if you've not watched um eating my fear foods for 24 hours i will link that in the link below but granola was a really big one for me and it was something that my mum always used to buy so I'd literally be like so anxious so angry at her for buying these foods because it was like I felt like everyone knew what they were and they knew that I struggled with those types of foods and I felt like they were bringing them it again really distorted way of thinking but I felt like they were bringing these foods into the house to test me in and I know that probably sounds really crazy, but that's the that's the kind of story that I would tell myself. <laughs> so granola was a really, really big one. And she also bought uh, full fat Greek yogurt, which is something that I've actually got now in my fridge. And that's what I heard earlier. So full fat Greek yogurt was a big one for me because I just thought I can't stop. And obviously things like chocolate chocolate biscuits cookies the usual but peanut butter for me was one of the biggest like I literally thought I can't control myself around this food and there was a long long time that I couldn't like I would binge on those kinds of foods and if you again if if you're watching this video you probably know what a binge is but i'm going to link also my other video below of what to do after a binge and in that video i go into detail about what the difference is between binge eating and just overeating because there's a big big difference but i would binge on those foods so bad particularly peanut butter and obviously you know peanut butter is a really really high fat food it's not a bad food it's just very high in fat 
and it's very dense, dense in calories. So I think this was a big reason of why I struggled with that so much because I thought the more I eat that, the fatter I'm gonna get or the more I'm gonna gain weight because it's so high in calories and I can't control myself around it. I honestly thought that food had a power over me. Like I literally thought I'm never gonna be able to just have that in the house and not think about it. And if you feel like that at the moment with any types of foods, coming from me you can get to this place i have a whole tub in the kitchen now and i i'm not you know i'm thinking about it now but i don't think about it like i have it most days but there's some days when i don't have it and i don't think about it you know i don't think about ever binging on it either like the thought of spooning that out the jar now doesn't appeal to me at all but it's taken a long time to get to this place I will admit but that's what I want to talk about now on how to flip it around and incorporate fear foods so like I said fear foods generally it's a fear of and it's usually a very irrational fear of like the worst thing happening if you allow yourself to have that certain food either by eating it or you know just in the house you know whether your fear of gaining weight or fear of losing control around that food that generally for me was it was a big fear that i i couldn't be trusted around those types of foods and then obviously fear of weight gain as well which is a big big one and um, that i also struggle with so my my obviously logic back then was like you know just avoid it but the thing is one i genuinely enjoy those foods like i love peanut butter it's one of my favorite foods but also you can't just shelter yourself and bubble wrap yourself around for the rest of your life because there's there's going to be those foods out and about when you're around with people and you know that's not that's no way to live really and that was something that I I genuinely wanted for myself I wanted to be able to be around those foods without freaking out like my partner he he would buy peanut butter especially when we was traveling around australia and i would panic so much because i'd be thinking oh god i'm just gonna eat that like i'm gonna overeat on that so bad but and so the goal for me was was i want to be one of those people that can have peanut butter in the house and i don't think about it i want to be able to not think about it 24 7 or binge on it binge on those foods i just want to be normal and if that's you too you can get to this place there's something that i've heard called i think it's called exposure exposure therapy i believe it's called yeah so it's called exposure based therapy and it's it's basically you know what eating disorder recovery actually is when because eating disorder eating disorders are very much you know within the mind and it's a fear of food it's a fear of gaining weight generally all eating disorders but most of them even binge eating disorder i think is a is a fear of weight gain as well in in some cases you know in order to recover from you know a, a fear you essentially need to expose yourself to it if you don't you're always going to have that fear so the thing with exposure based therapy is basically you know exposing yourself to the fear and realizing that one your fear doesn't either come true or if it does learning to be okay with it so for me for peanut butter for example what i would literally do and this sounds crazy i i know it sounds mad um, but I got to a place where I was like, right, you need to literally just allow yourself to have as much of it as you want. And that's scary shit because you think, well, I'm just going to balloon and I'm going to lose control. But the thing was, I did it very, very consciously. So for me, I would buy, um, and I would buy a jar of peanut butter and I would literally, sometimes I put it on stuff, but most of the time, I'm not joking, I just spooned it out of the jar. And again, it sounds scary if you are in recovery, and I wouldn't always advise that, that's just something that I did, so you don't have to be as as extreme. Um, but 
I allowed myself to have as much of it as I physically wanted and the more I did that the less interested in it I was because I know what it tastes like I know you know I know that I can have it whenever I want and you know it if you know your thing is like ice cream for example maybe it's not you know literally having a tub of it a night some people I know there's the all-in method which is pretty much the kind of method that I went for um but I wouldn't again I wouldn't always recommend that for everybody but you could do it in so like I don't want to say the word portions but you could say you know have a large bowl of ice cream every night and you know if you want that again five minutes later or you want it for your breakfast you want it for your dinner you want it for your tea allow yourself to have it and the more you do this the more you expose yourself to it you realize one it's just a food and it's not that exciting because you're allowing it in and you're allowing yourself to have those fear foods so then they're, they're not put on a pedestal anymore you know you know they're coming in you know you can have it again tomorrow if you want you know you can have it next week in five minutes you know there's no there's no restriction around it it's the restriction that makes that causes this like urge to overeat on those types of foods because when when we restrict something we crave it you know and it's like that analogy of don't think you know if somebody said don't think of a pink elephant you instantly start thinking of a pink elephant and it's you know it's the same if you deprived yourself of water what do you think you would do you know when you can finally drink water again you would down so much water and it's the exact same when you deprive yourself of food in general or certain foods so peanut butter was a big one for me so what I did was I allowed myself to have as much of it as I wanted which meant you know spooning it out the jar having it every single day I would even go as far to say if I would have it for my breakfast so have it on something for breakfast and then I would have it for my lunch again and the novelty starts to wear off now the other part with this obviously is like yeah but am I going to gain weight I'm going to gain weight if I do that like I'm going to blow up because it's so high in calories so yes essentially if you are underweight and your body is telling you that it needs food essentially you are going to gain weight but the difference is um and this is going back to the exposure based therapy and um, I know Megsy Recovery talks about this in one of her videos um, but you get exposed to the thing that you're most scared about so it might be hitting a certain weight on the scale or it might be you know gaining weight you know the fear of gaining weight now once you get to that place once you've gained the weight you're probably going to feel really really anxious you kind of feel really really uncomfortable and I'm not going to deny that you will feel shit like all of this is you're trying to recover years and years of wired programming within your mind so it's not going to be comfortable you're not just going to be like oh I've gained weight and I don't care like I've I've gained weight and there's days when I'm like feeling okay like today I feel fine I feel happy I feel confident within my body and then there's days when I don't feel so great but the difference is food doesn't hold food doesn't have any hold over me anymore and that is what recovery is so it's about exposing yourself to these fears that we have so fear of weight gain maybe fear of getting to a certain weight you know when you you know if you are weighing yourself i don't necessarily recommend it but let's say you you do hit a certain weight on the scale or you or you do gain a lot of weight learning to just sit with that anxiety and learning to sit with the discomfort rather than just jumping back to old behaviors that are going to make you feel better so you know you gain weight and think right i don't like this so i'm just going to go and diet because what does the dieting do or the restriction do it takes you back to you know your eating disorder or disordered eating and it it perpetuates this cycle of like binge restrict binge restrict or just restriction in general so the difference is and 
what I'm trying to say, hopefully you understand, um, is, you know, exposing yourself to these fears, maybe it might be useful for you to write down either your fear foods, so fear foods that you want to incorporate, and why you have those fears, or fears in general, so, you know, it might be fear of getting to this weight, or this number on the scale, or, you know, not fit in a certain size or whatever now for me i've hit a higher weight than where i am now and i'm a lot higher weight than you know i was when i was trying to diet and things and i never thought i'd be happy at this weight i thought i would be miserable i thought and i'm not saying you know for anyone watching that you know look at me and this is what you're going to look like because i'm not not trying to say that at all and I know there's going to be some people on here that are probably like I do not want to get to her size which is fine as well the difference is is it's about exposing yourself to those fears that you have around food and weight gain you know and when you when and if you do gain weight especially if you're recovering from anorexia you naturally will gain weight because you are underweight but even if you're just recovering from a disordered relationship with food you you could gain weight and it could come down it could plateau or you might even stay the same you could lose weight i don't know i don't know everyone's situation but the difference is is you've got to have your goal in mind how do you want to be around food how do you want what what relationship with food do you want to have do you want to have you know peanut butter having a hold over you for the rest of your life or do you want to be able to eat foods all in moderation which in order to get to that place you need to go through the uncomfortable phases of allowing yourself to have those telling your body and giving your body proof that it can have it whenever it wants so it's not going to be asking for it so much and with that it might be that you need to gain a little bit of weight again I don't know what could happen to your weight but the difference is you need to expose yourself to these fears maybe gain weight when you feel anxious scared hor horrified by what's happened you know if you've hit that number on the scale learning to sit with the discomfort or the anxiety um you know the f the feeling of anxiety or the emotion of anxiety it's horrible it's not a nice feeling but no one no one died from you know sitting with anxiety it's a feeling that we can all sit with and the more you can sit with those uncomfortable emotions the quicker you will recover and the more you'll realize that actually i'm fine you know yeah it's going to be horrible at first and it's not going to be uncomfortable but eventually you will start to see and i think in one of meg's videos she um tell she talks about what a psychologist says where your anxiety tends to rise and rise and then it gets to a point where it doesn't rise anymore and then it starts to decline so think of that whenever you do come up to a hitting point within your recovery journey and maybe you come to a place where you're feeling really anxious or you're feeling really uncomfortable with what's going on you know weight gain food think of that anxiety rising and if you learn to just sit with it it will plateau it's not going to get any higher it's just your job to ride it out instead of just using a different coping mechanism like dieting or restriction or purging whatever your coping mechanism is learning to ride learning for that anxiety to rise plateau and then dip back down because it will dip down you're not going to stay here and it's not going to go even higher than here it will rise to a point and then it'll go down and that honestly in my experience it does it does happen i never used to feel comfortable about having peanut butter in the house or gaining a certain amount of weight especially at the weight i'm at now i know back when i was you know disordered and struggling with my eating disorder i would have freaked at the thought of being like oh my god you're going to be at this weight i would have been like no i don't want to be at that weight no never <laughs> um and yet now look at me like i'm i'm not 
anxious, I'm not upset, like I'm literally just living my life and I'm living a life that's normal and free around food instead of freaking out about it. So I hope that made sense, um, I hope I hope I didn't blab too much uh, there but I hope you know that has helped somebody maybe if you are struggling with fear foods in recovery um, or if you want me to talk about this a little bit more in detail um, please let me know. But yeah I think the main message here is we need to expose ourselves to the things that we're most scared of without that, that exposure you're not going to get over those fear foods. And if that's the relationship of food that you want to have, you need to allow them in. You need to literally go forward and expose yourself to them. Yeah, I hope you found this video helpful. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next clip. Bye.